Good evening. Patrick here at Cheetah Will View. Eight questions with. And welcome to the show, everybody. Um, well, the good news is I'm on the air. Um, I don't need writers, so uh, <laughs> the strike is not going to affect the show. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing, right? I think it is. No, not that we ever have any. We don't. We don't ever write anything on the show. But it is a, a it is a very important um, time right now because the writers of America, the Writers Guild of America, have gone on strike. Now, I hope the writers have a lot more uh, cojones than the SAG after uh, a negotiating team did. I hope they hold out. I hope they hold out and get what they deserve. Um, and that is they need to get revenue from from streaming. Um, the last two times the actors have gone up for negotiations, they have not ne they have not negotiated that. They did not negotiate that. They still negotiated getting residues from network TV, and network TV is on its way out. Let's just be honest with each other. Each, each other. Network TV is it is so absolutely barren right now of anything. It's, unless it's a cop or a lawyer or a medical show, it's not getting on TV. Uh, there's very few comedies worthwhile. Everything's a procedural. Um, it's just uh, if you if you do succeed, if you if you actually do have a, a show that actually is a hit, you run the risk of actually running yourself out of a job or lower pay by the end of the fifth season. Uh, most places by that time, every time you get a, a renewed. Uh, a series is renewed, people get raises and whatnot. Uh, uh, crew, cast and crew get raises. And, and by the end of the fifth year, unless your show is owned by the studio proper, you run the risk of actually being too good for your own. You're, you're too good for your own good. Uh, uh, hey, Stephen, how are you? How are you? Glad you're here. Um, so the writer strike is here. And of course, you know, we'll be talking to, with our, our guest, uh, Jackie Kelly, uh, a fine actress uh, who's done some great horror films. And uh, that'll probably be our first, very first question. I can rest assure you is, uh, you know, what is it like now? You know, what is, what, I mean, actors, the actors, even though it's the Writers Guild of Writers Guild, the actors have to be paying attention to this. They have to be paying attention. Um, it's up to the writers to, established equality uh to balance the ship so to speak um every every actor and a lot of the writers and whatnot they have lost money for the last few years they have lost a lot of money uh as every as every, each studio has been taken over more and more by corporations um they take all the money for themselves uh tremendous amount some of the paychecks they get are absolutely obscene uh, for what they are. Uh, there's no equality. There's uh, equal pay or opportunity. Uh, they're not paying residuals or royalties or streaming services, which is where the industry's headed. Um, so I hope they draw the line and say, unless we get this, uh, that's it. Uh, you can find your own, you can find writers if you can. Uh, that will that will affect TV tremendously. Every project that's in, in the middle, in the pipeline, or series that is actually, you know, starting to ramp up pre-production, all that will stop on a dime, and the costs will start. It'll start costing the studio. So um, hopefully they'll do what's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, t telling someone who's really rich to actually give some back. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't always happen. I mean, unless you're Bill Gates or, or, or you know, or something like that, um, or uh, Mrs. Bezos, uh, who, uh, who, who also has given her fortune to charity. But most of the time, that's the that's that's the exception and not the rule. So, um, but but we're here to talk to Jackie Kelly tonight, uh, and I'm really glad we could have her. Uh, because we will be able to talk to her about this, like you know, get an idea, uh, a little bit of what's going on and how the, how the artists are looking at it, uh, what they hope to see the writers get. 
uh, I'm sure that they will be paying attention. And so the next time they go up for negotiations, they'll have a template of, of, on how to strike a fair deal. All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody who came out last night to the show. Uh, we talked to our good friend Matthew, uh, a.k.a. Backlash Fisherman. We had a great show and uh, had a lot of fun. And um, so I'm really happy to uh, bring our guest tonight. Jackie will be here. Um, tomorrow night, we have our good friend Dave Wyatt will be here from Genome Presents. Uh, and then on Friday, we have uh, uh, Casey Internet uh, Kaiju will be here with us. And on Saturday at 6 p.m., a special show on Saturday at 6 p.m., uh, we have the lovely Crystal O will be returning to us and to talk about her film, uh, Afterglow. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and we got some new stuff coming in May, too. Got, got, a couple, got a new booking today and pretty excited about that. Uh, uh, we're going to be bringing another uh, excellent quality musician to the show. And uh, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Todd Strange on uh, uh, May, uh, May 23rd. Uh, hey, Drew, how are you? How are you? Uh, those who are watching, uh, please hit the like button uh, and uh, share us out. Those who can, those who will, appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is still cold as hell here in Michigan. That's for sure. Uh, it has uh, it has um, not warmed up at all. It's been really, it's still really chippy. It's uh, it says it's like fifty two, but let me tell you, it ain't fifty two. It's it's colder than that. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, uh, I was looking over Jackie's, Jackie Kelly. She's actually, this is not her first, uh, foray into our community, actually. Uh, Jackie was a guest on, uh, Sledgehammer Horror, actually. I, I found that out when I was looking over his, uh, list of, of, uh, you know, your first horror movie, uh, which is an ongoing series that, uh, that Ken Sledge is doing, Ken and Ashley Sledge run on their channel. And uh, one of the people that they interviewed and asked who was, what was their first horror movie was none other than the, the Jackie Kelly. So that was really cool to see that. In fact, when I when I sent out my uh, when I sent out my blast, um, oh, I, I I truly don't understand that. I don't understand how how YouTube works. Even uh, I really don't. It's like uh. They say copyright claim, and yet I see people break copyright, copyright left and right. I mean, left and right. It's uh, it's not even funny. I have no idea how people are able to do this. They upload TV shows, movies, what have you, concerts, music, and not not a peep. I have I have no idea how that works. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Hey, Mayan, how are you? Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know what? We we'll have to we'll have to figure that one out. Uh, hey, Echo, Echo's here, uh, the host of the Echo Side, uh, which will be on later tonight, around ten fifteen or so, I think, and uh, he will be talking about zombies. Um. Oh yeah, special uh, special programming note too. Uh, me and the cheetah, we had such a good time when we hijacked the uh, we hijacked the uh, the midnight hour. Me and the cheetah did. We had such a good time doing that that me and the cheetah were hijacking another show this week. Uh, next Saturday at eight p.m., we are hijacking the House of Horrors. We're turning it into the House of Cheetahs. Um, so. Uh, Come on out on Saturday, 8 p.m., House of Cheetahs. Um, I don't know what we're talking about. I think I do. I think I'm going to be talking about – I'm probably going to be talking about The Descent, I think. I'm going to be talking about that and a little bit about French horror. Um, I think that I might be doing that um, or something along that line. It's going to be fun. Uh, hopefully, I can get some cronies to come out and hang out with us. I need a crew. Uh, hey, Steven, how are you? Love to talk to Tamara myself. Tamara, yeah, that'd be fun. That would be fun. 
Uh, I did book a, a new date. Like I mentioned, I booked a new date. I booked uh, Todd Strange. Uh, some of you might remember him uh, being a crowbar. Uh, he is getting a new super group together. It's cool to see that they're still doing that. Um, man, back in the 70s and 80s and some 90s, super groups were all the rage. Uh, you would get just tremendously gifted uh, artists they would come together. A lot of times it would just be for an album and a tour. It wouldn't be necessarily permanent, but um, but but uh, they're going to be doing that now. They're going to be putting together a new super group out, uh, Todd, Todd and some uh, friends, and uh, they call it's called I Am, and uh, it's E Y E M I Am, and um, they're supposed to be get, uh, practicing and getting ready to write some songs, head into the studio. Uh, their current members are still out there touring, so I will be interviewing just Todd right now. Uh, once they, the band gets together and starts working on the record, um, then we'll be able to slide over there and get the whole band in here and talk to them. Talk to them. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I really enjoy talking to the musicians. Uh, I probably should have been doing that a little bit more. So we will be doing that a little bit more. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy live music. And uh, like I said, I don't play an instrument, but I, I have a pretty good ear, pretty fair ear. Um, so, uh, so Todd Strange will be here with us on May 23rd. And of course, we have to give uh, an assist to our good friend, uh, 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 James from the Friendly Men. Uh, for helping us out with that gig. So I appreciate that. Uh, just like Stephen has, is helping me uh, line up some new faces to come on to the show. Um, once we get them booked, uh, a, a little hard, or because right now it's convention season time, and uh, it's hard booking talent right now uh, um, because of that. But with the writer strike in play, that means for a lot of times, a lot of projects have grounded to a halt. So hopefully that will, you know, let shows like us benefit a little bit from that. And we'll be able to talk to some more actors uh, and directors uh, if, they, if they're not working. Of course, we'd rather have them be working. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk to anybody who's not working um, because I'm sure that's stressful. Um, but most of the actors I have talked to, uh, they were prepared for this. They, they had been told by the representatives that, uh, um, that the writers that the writers go on strike to be ready for that, um, and I and I said actors and crew because they are affected. You know, every project is 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 affected by uh, by the writers. Um, you could actually still do uh, some acting shows, uh, whatnot, but you definitely need the writers. All right, our guest is here, so let's put our hands together and welcome the lovely Jackie Kelly to the show, and let's have fun. Because fun is the fun is the key word here. All right, let's go. Hey, Charles, how are you? All right, here we go. Oh, come on. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, that that's so much fun. I put my charger into my phone and then when I tip it when I tap the screen, uh it um it goes away. Okay, there we go. Am I in? You are in. Yay. Yeah, yeah, tech problems, tech problems. Uh yeah, it has, it only happens once in a while. It's weird and I don't know what causes it, but um most of the time, you just scroll up and you hit the button, and um, you hit the button, and uh, 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 and you just do the you know let your guest in or what have you. 
but sometimes when you hit it, it'll knock you off, which is what happened to me. Well, crisis averted. <laughs> yes, thank God for that. Uh, all right, people are here. Uh, thank you for coming in. I see, I see some fresh faces here. Hi, Trevor. How are you? Of course, uh, uh, looks like Hobbs is here. Hi, Hobbs. Uh, our good friend. Wait a minute. I gotta make sure it's a real. Uh, make sure it's our real friend. Uh, make sure it's not the imposter. No we fake imposter. friends allowed. Oh my gosh! Well, we get we throw down a password every time we see this guy to make sure he's really his uh -oh. who he says he is. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, yes, it's whew, crisis averted twice. Nice. Uh, we're on right. a roll. <laughs> can we can we stop right now while we're while we're way ahead? Um, wow, good to meet you. By the way, good to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you? Good, good. good. Uh, you, this is not your first foray, whether you know it or not. This is not your first foray into our little community. Uh, you did a show with our friend Ken Sl uh, Sledge. Ken and yes. Yes. yes, yes, he did. Yeah. He does um, my first horror movie. That's yeah. that was a good show. It is a good show. Uh, in fact, being the cheetah, where we were on the show uh, about last week, as a matter of fact. Okay. Uh, what was your first horror film? Uh, we talked about Evil Dead 2. Wow. There, yeah, my dad introduced me to Evil Dead 2 when I was maybe between 10 and 12, I want to say. Oh, my God. Nightmare fuel. Yeah, at least that one's kind of silly, you know. Okay. It's, it's a goofy one. Good thing it wasn't the first one. I I prefer the second one. I mean, I love the first one too, but the, the second one I think is where they really found their footing and it's a lot more stylized for sure. Uh let's see. Uh everybody's talking about uh man and room six. Uh 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 wow. Uh yes. Uh and I'm looking at that. I looked at that, and you and I have mutual friends in that too. Um, Debbie Brochon, who I've been talking to for years, okay. and Bill, Bill Obrist Jr. was a guest on the show as well. Yeah, wow. they're, they're great, great performers. I had so much fun working with both of them. They're both, they both have very illustrious careers and are both very down-to-earth and very talented and lovely to work with. You know, my first question to you, Jackie, because uh, as we roll into this interview, uh, the writers are on strike. Yes, uh, I, I mean, you you must be apps. I mean, are have you talked with your peers? Are you guys all energies focused on what's happening with them? Because uh, it seems like the last two times that the actors went to negotiate, they they sort of got you guys got sort of got played. Uh, you know what? I admittedly don't know as much about what's going on with this writer's strike as I should. It sounds like a lot of the writers aren't getting paid what they're worth. And it, from the very little I've read about it, it, it sounds like there is a, a, a big fear of AI technology getting in the way of uh, the jobs of writers. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's with streaming services, I know it's it's harder for a lot of these people in the industry to make money because they're worried about not getting butts in theater seats, but arguably more people are watching the, this content via streaming service than at a theater anyway. So it's kind of BS. So I, I, I totally understand why, why they're outraged, you know? Yeah, I, I was really just, I was really saddened the last time the writer, the actors, you know, negotiated because I saw, you know, I, I followed those through the trades and the, and the elections and everything else. And it was just really, to me, it was just like really simple. Right. You know, to sit there and negotiate, like, listen, it's a whole different. There's a whole different world now, you know. We need we need residues. We need royalties done on our stuff that we do on streaming. Right. If you play our stuff on streaming services, we need to get paid for that, just as we do when you play them on TV. Right. And the last two negotiating times, it has not really happened for the actors, and I'm really hoping that the the writers get that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't make a movie or a show without a writer. So you really can't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for you because to me it's like it, wh whatever the writers get, whatever whatever they negotiate, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better for them, and it's also I think it's gonna roll over and help you uh, help the artists, uh, the actors as well. Yeah, uh, I, I really hope something good comes from it. I'm rooting for them. Me too. 
me too. I'm rooting for you. We, we you know, we, we enjoy, we enjoy your work. We, we, we understand how much you have to sacrifice to, to, to bring us, you know, to be an entertainer. And uh, yeah, you guys should get paid for it. Well, we appreciate that. We think so too. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, while now, what happens now with you guys? You know, you guys all get a notice. I know all the writers got a notice, and I guess all the uh, SAG actors get a notice and whatnot. So, what what are you allowed to do as an actor right now? Are you allowed to work on any project right now? Um, well, I I am not a part of SAG. Oh. I have never been with SAG. Um, I have, I have found that I've had a much, I I would assume easier time finding work non SAG because I work predominantly in the indie scene. Um, I think it's kind of a hurdle for a lot of indie filmmakers to hire SAG people. I'm not saying it's not doable, of course not, but, uh, yeah, and especially I live in the Midwest too. So most of the projects that I sign on to are intentionally non-union. So I'm a little uh, nervous about going SAG for those reasons. Um, so it has not you, had an impact on me personally. Uh, what about any of the projects that you're on? Not at the moment. No, no, because none of the projects that I am working on right now are union projects. Mm. So the indie stuff is still able to go pretty strong as of now. That's a good thing. I yeah, mean, I, I thought I thought everything would just rock to a stop because of the because of the strike. No, no, the the independent projects, you know, that don't have ties to SAG or the WGA, you know, we can still carry on as we always have. Okay, okay. Uh, people are still saying hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Eden's in here saying hello to you. Uh, our, our publicist friend, Steve Chang is in here. Stephen Chang's in here and he's offering his services. Very nice young man. Very, very ambitious too. And I appreciate that. And, uh, he is willing to help you out, promote yourself. Uh, and he thinks that you're amazing. Uh, yeah. And Rick says indie biz. Yes. Yes. It, that's a good thing. I mean, I guess that is a really good thing that, uh, there, there will be movies continue to be made. Because, you know, that's really what I thought was going to happen. I thought that all the movies were just going to squeeze to a halt, um, which I'm glad to see that it's not. Um, that, way, that way you can get out there and promote yourselves, too. I mean, right now it's starting to become at the middle. It's starting to the convention season. Do you do the convention season during the summer, Jackie? Do you? No, or is that like the summer is I working? Don't, I don't do a lot of conventions. I mean, I have gone to conventions, but it's not like a yearly thing that I've ever done. Um I would like to start going to more because I've always had a good time every time I've been to one. The last um, one I went to was um, VHS Fest in uh, Pennsylvania. I forget, what was the name of the town? Mahoning, the Mahoning Drive-In in Pennsylvania. It's all mm -hmm. shot on video, VHS themed. So that oh, was really cool. Mm -hmm. That was in 2021. So... Um, yeah, I gotta get out to more cons. Do you get out to cons? I don't really get out to cons. I, I have we have friends who do cons. Uh, we have one guy who's actually a vendor, and he okay. goes around. He does he does uh, uh does cons. Uh, I the last con I went to probably was I think twelve years ago, back back when it was reasonable. You could actually go there and and you know actually have fun and not break the bank. Right. It, it's gotten really expensive to go to cons, man. Oh, you my know, God. with travel, lodging, and then everything you want to do inside of the con. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a starving artist, so yeah. <laughs> I only yeah. have so much money to burn, right? I'm a, I'm a starving podcaster, right? Yeah, you, you know, get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm broke. Yeah, uh, I don't have two nickels to rub together. Um uh, uh, hi Betty, how are you? Uh, let's see, Motor City Nightmares is coming up. Uh, might I don't know. I might take a look at that if it's if I think it's local. Um, I keep on saying I should just reach out and get a press pass. Is I, that I just, that? Where's Motor City? Uh, I believe it's in Novi. Uh, Motor City Nightmares is in Novi. Uh, it's either Novi or Livonia. Um, what, what state is that? Uh, Michigan. Oh, in Michigan, Motor City. Duh. 
Uh, okay. there's, more, there's the Motor City Comic Con, which is the premier uh, convention we have in Michigan. And I used to go to, that's the one I used to go to all the time. And it used okay. to be very, very reasonable to go to. You, you pay five bucks parking. You paid about 10 bucks to get in. And, and it was just a lot of fun. If you paid for a celebrity, if you wanted to get a celebrity, you can get one for like 10 or $12. Um, I, and, but now it's absolutely just insane. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's like forty bucks to get in. That's just to get in, right? Um, and, and then every celebrity has their table, and a lot of co a lot of conventions, uh, you know, there's no sliding scale. Uh, whatever the top dog is offering, like you know, if uh, if a Star Trek member is right there and they're charging eighty dollars, most of everybody else has to charge eighty dollars as well. Wow. Yeah. So even if you're a red shirt. And, and no one really knows who you are other than a, as a red shirt. You still have to charge them eighty dollars, the same as the top star. Yeah, sort of they're fun. they're getting up there. Yeah. Um, so you went to Pennsylvania for your last con, but before we talk about that con and and whatnot, um, you would you grew up in Illinois. I did. Your town your town's name is cool as hell. Isn't it? It is. I I was really tickled. I was like. That's, you know, you can talk about that all by itself. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your town because you grew up uh, in a town called Sleepy Hollow. I did. Oh my gosh, that's just amazing. It's a now, small town. Uh, it's a northwest suburb of Chicago. It's like maybe 30, 40 minutes outside of the city. It's not, <laughs> it's not as interesting as it sounds. I mean, it's a pretty traditional suburb but it's really cool because every year around halloween they have this big bonfire down by like the fire department and they just collect material all year round and then a weekend before halloween they actually have someone ride around on a horse with like a prosthetic stamp on their head so he looks like the headless horseman right and they light the fire and it's giant it's really cool oh my gosh um did now did you go down there as a kid Oh yeah. So before this is before the Johnny Depp movie came out. So you just went yeah. because of because of the story. I, I just yeah. thought maybe, okay. Uh now did the town get really popular uh once the movie came out though? No, nothing nothing changed. Oh wow. No, okay. I mean we're not the only Sleepy Hollow in the States. I think I, I the, the Sleepy Hollow movie, it's not based off of the Sleepy Hollow, Illinois. It's somewhere it out east, I think. They're ripping you guys off. I know. Well, I thought it was all about Illinois. Nope. I don't think. I mean, don't quote me on that. Maybe I'm wrong, but well, I am wrong sometimes. Believe it or not. No, really. Sometimes. No, that's not what I heard. I heard that you. I heard that you can walk on water and feed the me feed the masses with. Well, that's all true. Water. That's all okay. true. Believe that. <laughs> so Sleepy Hollow, though. Um, now I, I just think imagine like right now, I mean, Halloween must be just like the craziest time of year in a town like that. Um I mean <laughs> I wish I had crazier stories for you, but when I was growing up there, it was just a lot of families with little kids. So are, like, you, are, are is your family still does they did they does your family still live in Sleepy Hollow? My parents do, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I still um, get up there all the time. Now, do you have? The, are you recognized for your work in your town? Does your town write about you, local no, girl? No, they need to start. Damn it! You're are you serious? They don't no. write. No one's write articles about you in your career. I don't think so. My no God. one's ever contacted me. My God, what's up with the press? <laughs> I mean, if I'm an editor, I'm all over this. Um, <laughs> local screen queen is, is coming back to, to to tear tear up the town for Halloween. Yeah. Um, Nothing, nothing like that. Normally, I think my parents, they tell me every Halloween they get like five trick-or-treaters now. Like, it's not a big thing at all. It should be, but it's it should not. Be. Well, you know what it is? You need to, you need to license the, 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 the official word, the new official word for Halloween. You need to license it out. Okay. As a, as a matter of fact, the owner of the word is in the chat. Uh, and you guys, you know, your town can negotiate a fee. It's called the Spectacular, and um, I'm sure if you put this, you know, come to the Halloween Spectacular in Sleepy Hollow, I'm sure to be just lights out. 
That's an idea. Five That's a really good idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, now, did, what was the first costume you wore when you were when you went trick or treating? You know, I don't have vivid memories of the first costume I wore, but I can reference photos that my parents have. Mm -hmm. And there's one of me, real small, maybe like three years old, where I was. They dressed me as a clown. Two or three, maybe. My. And now I'm like a, I I collect clowns. You can probably see some of them in my. There's, so, so there's a clown. These clowns. Needless to say, you 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 want you want to roll in in uh, Terrifier three. Or I want I want my own clown movie. Uh, yeah. Would have you have you done a movie? Someone already movie? does that. There's a, they already have an actor for that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was just gonna say you, you could you you could dress up as a clown and you could two guys could go out of the town clowning around. So uh, kind of like nice clowns though, like. Yeah, I I, do you understand people getting scared of clowns? I mean, you're obviously no. you're not scared of clowns. Um, no, I, I like um, like cute antique clowns. I don't think they're scary. I think they're charming. Okay, uh, we have catch up here and with the chat here. Uh, see the comment about the different cons. Uh, Monster Plus is coming up. Um, the shoe cons are getting expensive for everyone guests as well. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, Motor City Nightmares is having the Big Evil Dead reunion. <laughs> That's right. That makes sense, Charles, because uh, Sam Raimi is from and Bruce Campbell are both from Michigan. Um, and um, yeah, Sam Raimi lives lives in a town about he lives in a town called Franklin, which is about 25, 30 minutes away from me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, state to state conventions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you know, it used to be that you could go to, it used to be you could go to like three or four conventions a season, but now, you now people are just like, you know, now it's now just a one. Yeah. You can't yeah, afford it. Uh, so Sleepy Hollow is a sleepy town. Okay. <laughs> uh, Flaming Pumpkin Head. I, I, I know if they had, if they had a, a little convention there, man, we would have, you would have to do something. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, Flaming Pumpkin Head, yep. Uh, see, we have similar events here in Ohio. Uh, Ohio is Halloween State. Yes, that's the home of the spectacular. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Trevor is mentioning Sleepy Hollow, New York, is the one from the story. Yeah, but you know what? You know they took it that's away. That's not from the Illinois. good one, though, Trevor. No, no. You know they. You know they still have Illinois. Um, Illinois has uh, Lansford. Where the Connors are from, uh, as well as the Portillos. Um, okay, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm Portillos. Yeah, we went there yeah. all the time when I was a kid. Uh, okay, okay. Well, it's, you're based in Illinois right now, right? Are I'm you in going? St. Louis, Missouri, right now. Oh, really? Okay, so like right across the river is basically Illinois. Uh, that's not a that's a that's a good territory to be in, isn't it? I you mean, know, there's a lot of work there. Uh. I, I have to travel a lot for work, uh, mm. but you know, cost of living here is so much cheaper than most places. So I feel like being a working actor, I can afford to do it here and in other locations that might be more difficult. So yeah. it's, it works out in the meantime. Um, what did you, uh, did, when did, what did you get your start at in Illinois? I mean, as far as acting, where did, how old were you when you got the bug? Well, I started doing live theater when I was like 12, just like school theater, community theater. And I did that all throughout high school. So up until I was about 18. And then I went to film school in St. Louis. And that's where I got a degree in screenwriting. And then about halfway, I, I actually kind of denounced acting the first couple of years of college because I was like, I'm going to make the movies. I'm not going to be someone's puppet, you know, I kind of had an attitude about it. And then I got the acting bug again and now I'm acting all the time. And I just, yeah, I, I'm awesome. sure you I love it. I'm glad I'm doing it. It's just funny because I, I didn't think I would be doing it, but I don't know what else I'd be doing. You know, you could be screenwriting. I could be screenwriting and I, I do write. I just do not make a living at it. Yeah. So, I mean I, it seems like a lot of it seems like a lot of actors as as they become more secured in their craft, 
uh, they do try to they do try to expand out more. You know, like you you hear about actors who are doing screenwriting or right. they'll start trying to direct movies. Right. You know, because they've already done the acting. They they're, they're comfortable with it. You know, they know they know it. You know, they know what to expect from it, and they want to be challenged. So they go ahead and they start learning something new. Um, do you, are you are you at that place yet? Do you feel do you are you are you to the point now where you're comfortable with you know like someone you get a script, you could just crush it, uh, and and you and you decide that you want to try to do something else that you want to try to direct or you want to try to write a screenplay or yeah I mean I'm actually uh, working on a second draft of a feature script that I've been plugging away at that I would very much like to direct within the next twelve to eighteen months. We'll see how that goes with money and everything. Fundraising is a gamble, uh, you know. Fundraising. But yeah, I, that's definitely what I have my sights on next is um, directing a feature. Uh, uh, a horror, horror film? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Are there other movies? That now, you now, now, do, you, do you embrace the term screen queen, Jackie? Is that, is that, a, is that, is that, do we apply that too easily to, to actors? I, yeah, I think we do. I think we do. Um, I wouldn't call myself a scream queen. Um, I also feel like I do more like uh, I don't really do slashers and stuff. I mean, I've done like one, but most of the stuff I do is more kind of art house leaning. So I feel like even if I was notable enough, the term scream queen wouldn't be applicable to me, if that makes sense. Yeah. But no, I mean, I. Yeah, we might throw it around a little, a little loosely. I think maybe, I think maybe, um, I think you have to do like you should have to do ten horror films, and you should have to die or be the final girl in at least eighty percent of the movies. Yeah. Okay. I would agree with that. I think, I think then, and then, then, then you earn a badge. Yeah. You know, like you, have, you know, like a, like a, like a enamel pin or something. Yeah, and you get to wave it in people's faces. Right. <laughs> put it put it on top of the, put it on top of the rv a flag screen queen. yeah because yeah. <laughs> we all you know all of us horror actresses we do all drive rvs too that is something we're known for uh how do you how do you how do you get around as an independent uh, uh actress how do you get around the country is that something that that um do you have to worry about that do you have to pay some of your way some of the time or is that always built into the budget so if they want you they do have to pay for you yeah, I personally never had to pay for travel. Um, they'll normally just buy you a flight, or if, if you are driving there, just reimburse gas money. Especially nowadays, it's so expensive to travel, you know? So, luckily, that is something I do not normally have to worry about. Um, so so you're, uh, you started uh, your, your career out at 12, you hit the stage. Uh, did you go to high school and stay, stay, still stay on the, on the theater? Or? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I did. Um, in middle school, I did a lot of musical theater. And then high school, I kind of stopped doing musical theater and I just moved over to the, the drama side, just plays specifically. My senior year of high school, I played Joan of Arc. And that was cool. Now, did you know who she was before you took the role? I did. I, I grew up Catholic, so okay. when I was confirmed, Joan was the, my chosen saint. So, I okay. knew all about dear Joan. That's right. I was going to say that's hot, but I don't want to be, uh, you know, insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's hot, man. She's, <laughs> she's a saint. Yeah. Yeah. But she was a hot saint. Was she? Yeah, she certainly was, especially I at the end. I don't know if she was. At the end, she was. Huh. Yeah. I mean, do we really know what she looked like? I think that's all in your mind, you know? How, the yeah. picture that you've created of Joan of Arc might be Well, no, no, because that's how, she, that's how she died. She died at the stake. Yeah. Oh, it's... Oh, <laughs> I'm stupid. No. no I'm not I'm good enough for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> are you, were, now, were you Catholic growing up? I was. Okay, so so uh, you so you were sort of shielded in your er, early work as an actors. I mean, you you did plays that weren't really, you know, they were for families and stuff like that. Um, what was your? Did you go to college for acting? I mean, you mentioned that. I, oh, mean, I, just, I went for screenwriting. Okay, you went to screenwriting. Mm -hmm. 
Now, now, what did you like better at college? What college did you go to? I went to a school in St. Louis called Webster University. It's okay. a small liberal arts school. Okay. Um, how did you like it? What, was, what are some? Do you have some good experiences there? Uh, I have, I have a lot of student loan debt. No, yeah. it's good. I mean, I met some really great people and like some of my current collaborators, like I see Trevor Younger was in the chat. I don't know if he still mm -hmm. is, but um, mm -hmm. I work with him all the time, him and his wife, Carrie, and I met them through Webster and I probably wouldn't have met them otherwise, you know, so there's definitely mm -hmm. a lot of people that I know from there that if I didn't go to school, I would have never crossed paths with. So um, that being said, I, I just, I don't use my uh, degree, you know, and then that's on me because I, I write, but I don't, I'm not a career writer. I, I don't make, I've never made money off of writing. So it's do, a little do hard. You write, to do, you write during off, do you write during your off time though? I mean, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, as long as you're writing at some level, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but yeah, as far as, uh, you know, getting paid to write something. Right. I think that'll probably happen for you in the future. Based, yeah, based just, I, I've really just um, placed most of my focus on the acting side of things over the last, I guess, eight years now. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy being there. But yeah, I, I would definitely like to direct, like we were talking about earlier, write and direct. Who's the best director you worked with? The best director I've worked with? yeah the one the one that would impress you the most i mean that's such a hard question because they're they're, they're, all, they're all good all, all the all the, all the directors you work with are good but what's the one that that you know if you could shadow one you know like you to learn who would you shadow well i'm going to say my i just got married on saturday to uh, my favorite director, Eric Stanzi. Here's my <laughs> ring. We just got, we just got wed. Can you see it? Wow. But he. Uh, uh, I can. I can. Yeah, we uh, made a film together. In two, it came out in 2018, called In Memory of, and we wrote it together with another collaborator of ours named Jason Christ. Me and Jason starred in it, and Eric directed it, and I just think he is a whiz. Um, he can do something that not a lot of people can do, which is he can direct impeccably while simultaneously being the DP, which is a very, very hard thing to do. Um, but he's the best. So I'm going to um, say Eric. But I, but congratulations. Uh, thank you. On being married. Yes. Uh, I had I recognize some of the uh, the collaborators you mentioned, uh, Jason, Chris, and Eric Stance. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I noticed that. Is it, now are are those all St. Louis based actors as well? So is there a yeah. core is there a core acting group within St. Louis? Uh, yeah, those the the two of them are St. Louis born and raised. Um, they're the production company that we make things under is called Wicked Pixel Cinema. So, okay. yeah, um, check it out. Uh, so, so, so he would, you would, uh, you would after you would uh, shadow Eric as far as your director goes. Is there, I, was there? I think I would. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's awesome. Um, so going back to Webster, what are, what are the, what is the, what are the three things you think that you took with it from Webster? Uh, and no, not that student debt doesn't count, but what are the three things that you think that you took? That have helped you the most in your career. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, I got on my first film sets at Webster, and one of the biggest hurdles to jump when you're first starting out in your career is just understanding how a set operates, um, especially from the standpoint of someone that's directing or trying to get into directing. There is a very there's a hierarchy on a film set and it's important to understand it. And, you know, that's where I learned all the ins and outs of that. Again, the, the friends that I made through Webster that I still collaborate with today. And I had, I had a handful of professors that, that left a mark on me. 
some of my writing teachers. Yeah, I mean, for you for you to continue to write. And I love the fact that you stayed in contact with a lot of your peers at college, because that's one thing, uh, you know, we always we always hear about is, you know, you know, whenever actors get together for a project, you know, once the project is over with, a lot of times that, you know, it's that so is that collaboration, you know, so is that teamwork. Um, I think I think it's having a small, tight knit community of core actors and crew Let's say in let's say in St. Louis, there's like a core group of of a couple hundred skilled operators, you know, in various departments. Mm-hmm. I, I think that I think that makes movies uh, coming out of that area that much more stronger because you guys all know how you guys know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And I think right. I think that, that makes that to me. I think if you know that, I think it makes for a better film, right? I mean, because you know what what one person can do, you're not going to put them in a position to fail, because, right? You know, with a movie, it's like when one fails, it could, it could take the whole movie down with it. Well, and something that I feel very strongly about, especially the longer that I do this, is working with people that you know, love, and respect. Um, because a huge part of the success of making a film lies completely within on-set morale. Um, I, I love working with people that I've worked with several times before because I know what to expect from their sets. I know what to expect from everyone's behavior. Um, I like making movies with my friends, you know? And I I do a lot of work where I, I travel to a different state and I don't know anyone working on the film and I generally have a wonderful experience doing that too. But there's really something to be said about compiling a crew and cast of people that you're tight with. Because yeah. making movies is so hard doing indie film is it's a really really arduous task and the way i see it is like if you're gonna go through all of that sacrifice and struggle you might as well have fun while you're doing it and do it with people that are cool you know right i agree um do you identify yourself as an actress in st louis like when you like in you know california whatever you're in hollywood you know when you go up there to somebody and, and they say oh, i'm an actor and of course, you hear that in LA because everybody's an actor. But is, right. it, is it that way in St. Louis as well? Do you, people ask you, "What do you, you know? What do you do, uh, uh, Jackie? Do you turn around and tell them that you're a working actor?" I do. Yeah. And sometimes people are like, "Wow, that's cool." And other times, people are like, "Grow up." <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, right. Uh-huh. But yeah, I do. Uh, what do you? What did your parents think of your choice? Were they were they were they pretty excited or were they cautious? You know, my parents are incredible people. Mm-hmm. They have been so supportive of what I do, and I'm sure if I was coming to them asking for money every other month, they'd be like, "Get a job." But <laughs> <laughs> but they they respect what I do. Um, yeah, I mean, my parents are like my biggest fans. So I, I'm very uh, grateful to have them as parents. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see uh, what one of the things they gave you, you have a tremendous sense of humor. You think so? Wonderful. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's coming through. You're very delightful. Hmm. Thank you. So are you. Um, uh, have you ever, Do you like doing comedy? Or you, do you, you mean, have you ever done comedy or are you just... Do you like um, different, you know, different genres that maybe you haven't worked at before? I always do horror. Um, I'm actually in the middle of working on a film right now. Um, I just got it. We're shooting out in L.A. It's called Wake Not the Dead. We shot for like three weeks in March and April. And I've got to go back in like a month and a half to finish that one. And I'm having so much fun with it because it's it is a horror film, but it has a heavy comedic leaning to it. And I feel like it's the first time anyone's ever like given me a role that is so over the top silly. And it's been a lot of fun um, because I never thought that I like wanted to do comedy or be good at comedy. But this one's been a blast. Like we've just been like laughing our asses off this entire shoot. That's so I would one. definitely be open to doing more stuff like that after this experience. I, I think comedy, I mean, I, would, I you know it's funny like I I hope that we, I hope there is more comedy coming out. Just it just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot right now. I uh, love comedy, and you know, I was actually just having this conversation today. 
feel like the older I get, the more I like comedy. Like, I spent so many years only consuming horror movies or, like, really dark content. And that's still, like, my favorite kind of film to watch. But, man, I love just sitting down and watching something stupid now. It's yeah. just fun, you know? No, I get it. All about I get it. it. Um. Did you did you think that you're gonna end up end up doing horror films? I mean, because you don't really look like the prototypical horror actress. Actually, you do look like more of a comedian or or a leading lady. What I mean, are you saying? I'm funny looking. No, no, I'm saying leading lady. <laughs> no, I, I you're the type of you're the type of uh, uh, type of you have the type of look that you know, at the end of the movie you and the you and the romantic lead are you know riding off into the sunset together. I always knew I was going to do horror. Ever since I took an interest in film, I've always been, it's always been horror. Um, that's definitely, that is my one true love. And it's not like specifically horror, like jump scare horror. I just, I like movies and art that are, I, I like things that are dark and spooky and macabre. And that's just always been my leaning. So yeah, it's always been about that. Um. So now you mentioned, you know, Evil Dead Two was your first film that you that that you watched. But mm -hmm. were there any films that you watched growing up that scared you? Have you ever been scared watching a movie? Only when I was a kid. Um, I don't remember. There was this movie when I was, I think it was a Disney release. We had like the old clamshell VHS. It's called The Great Mouse Detective. Do you know that movie? It's like I'm one of the more it. understated Disney movies. But um, there's this one part of that where there's like this bat character and he was in a, a baby carriage. And one of the characters, you know, takes the blanket away from this, what is supposed to be a baby. And it's this little bat guy. And he goes, ah, and he like jumps out. And I remember being real, like, I have this vivid memory of that, like scaring me a lot when I was little. But I don't have that many early memories of being scared by movies. Uh, now, like were, were, were your parents big movie buffs? Did they, did they take you to the theater quite a bit? Um, yeah, we went to the. We definitely rented more movies from the video store than we did go to the movie theater. But my parents like movies. My dad, especially, is a pretty big movie fan. So he introduced me to a lot of stuff that I really like. You know, he introduced me to um, David Lynch and um, uh, Jacob's Ladder. That's another film that I really, really like that my dad introduced me to. And that that's actually a scary movie. I don't know if you've seen Jacob's Ladder. That's a movie that I think is quite frightening. Uh, what about Skinner Marinic? I love Skinner Marink. I know that the internet is completely torn on it, but I actually think Skinner Marink, it gives you a weird feeling. Is that Trevor that asked that? Yeah. Skinner Marink is scary. I take that back. And the thing that's great about skin and Marink is that it completely messes with your sense of time so you're watching this film in the theater and you can't tell if it's been 20 minutes or like an hour and a half that you've been watching it and so it just feels like this mind warp and i really liked it i mean yeah i mean i i agree with people's argument that nothing happens they're they're right nothing happens but it's a vibe baby it's all about that vibe and i loved it I think it's awesome that someone made a 15k movie and it just took off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I'm gonna be, end up be watching it. Uh, I'm actually gonna be watching it here in a week. I, uh, someone sent me a copy of it to watch a screener, so I'm gonna watch it. Um, I'm Good pretty luck. hyped up for it. Yeah, I'm pretty hyped up for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I realize that it, you know, I think I think the one thing people compared it to was the Eraserhead. They said it's very mm -hmm. much you know um, just not much really going on you know it's just i think know. there's a lot more going on in a racer head than skinnamarink though i i love them both i well i love eraser head eraser head is so twisted um uh, uh trevor says that uh skinnamarink is uh so scary I, of course anytime you have a, a a child who's a parent like that i think that is i think it's a natural terror i think it's a natural terrifying you know, I think that's, I think that comes natural. It's one of our greatest primal fears is growing up and having losing a parent. Mm -hmm. So I can understand that. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, now, now, you, what was the first horror film that you got to work on? Did you do shorts when you were at Webster? Yes, I did shorts. Um, the first... I didn't really act in any horror when I was in college, except for like a movie that I directed that I started in too. But yeah, I mean, that's that's when I started making movies was college. Now, I haven't asked an act, I haven't asked an actor this question in a long time, but I'll ask you this one now. But what's more scary for you as an actress on, on, a, on a set? Is it doing is it doing a horror film where maybe your character gets killed? Or a romantic lead where you have to kiss a stranger, a scene partner. What's which one? What causes the what causes Jackie to like go? Or yeah. I mean, I I can't say I'm afraid of either. I've done I've done both. I mean, I've never done like a a, a straight up romantic film, but I've definitely done screen kisses and I don't know. It just it, with that kind of thing, I feel like it's only weird if people make it weird. And like, if everyone just accepts that you're, it's a scene and you're acting, I've never had any issues with it. I love getting killed on screen, though. I, I'd, I'd say I, I prefer that. I'd much rather get killed on screen than like. How many, well, wait a minute. How, how many times have you been killed on screen? A lot. More than eight. No, not more than eight. I've I've actually done more killing than I've been killed. <laughs> for sure. Damn, I like it. But but you haven't been killed more. You haven't been killed more than eight times, though. I don't think so. Okay, because you know if you had, then I would have been. I'd be. You'd be a screen queen. We have to start. Maybe that's, maybe that's why I can't be a screen queen too, though, is because I'm too often the, the bad guy. You know. That's a good thing. Yeah, but see, who would suspect? See, that's what I mean, though. See, that's that's the best part, though. It's like you know, that's the best thing about your look is like no one would ever suspect that. If I, you know, you put a, you put you put you, you put you in the middle of a group. And the last person that you would suspect would be the killer would be you. Nobody would ever suspect it to be you, which is why you'd be the perfect killer. That's why I'm the best killer, yeah. Yeah. It's always the one you least expect. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, how, how do you like playing a villainous? Oh, I love it. It, it's, it. If I could play a villainous in every film for the rest of my life, I would. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay. Yeah. See, uh, not not yet, Stephen. Not yet. Well, she she still got to she still got to uh she still got. I guess to be a screen queen, you got to die. You can't be <laughs> the villain. Villainous. Uh, 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 a screen queen is one who runs away. Uh, the final girl or the one who gets killed. Um, let's see, Trevor's missing. Uh, would Jackie ever get any real tattoos or piercings for a role? And Trevor's what's the biggest... just saying. See, Trevor, he's the director of the man in room six a film that came out last year that i'm in uh-huh he just wants me to get tattoos for his next movie he's just really? he's just trying to manipulate me here so so what tattoo are you getting i'll get some fake tats i'm not getting any real ones i'll get piercings i'll get piercings for a roll but I, okay. i'm not getting tattoos for a roll piercings you can take no, out you can't, you can't do that yeah so you can't get a real tattoo because that would take away the, the innocence part, see? Because once people see tattoos on a person, they immediately think they have a little bit of a shady past. And so that casts suspicious on your character. And with your character being like, we don't know who the killer is, and people don't suspect you because you, you know, you you're so all American. That's right. That's right. So all yeah. American. Wow, I've never heard that one before. I don't normally yeah. I don't normally get um, that. So uh, let's talk a little, you know, now that we had Trevor sitting in the chat talking about the man in room six. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about that movie. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other films as well. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the man in the, in the room six. How, how did you get uh, attached to the project? Well, I have been longtime friends with Trevor and Carrie. Um, I made a film with them in 2015 called Dope. It was meant to be a series we ended up just shooting the pilot of it i've been very good friends with them ever since and so they wrote me into the man of room six and I, i'll do anything with these two they're like two of my best friends and they're two of the most uh, creative people that i've ever met and man of room six was 
probably the most epic, ambitious film I've ever worked on. It's a two and a half, two and two hours and 34 minutes, I want to say. It's two and a half hours. It took us like over two years to shoot it. We shot it in multiple states. I play three characters in it. So it's it's a very um, epic scaled independent film. Now, what, what were the roles that you played? I mean, were they all distinctively different? Yes. They're all very distinctively different. And I, I don't want to say too much about the different roles I played because it's one of those things that you just have to go how, see it. How did you separate? How did you prepare for the role and how did you separate them? Well, because the shooting schedule, it spanned over a long period of time. Luckily, none of the roles that I played were like shooting back to back days. So I had a lot of space in between to feel out the different characters. The main character I play, she's definitely like the through line of the movie. And then the other two are much smaller parts. Um, okay. But it was really cool. I've never played multiple characters in the movie before that. So that was neat. Now, is that really is that important for you to, to have, you know, since you say you do play in a lot of horror movies and, you know, and you do run the risk of being typecast, you know, like all she can do is just horror, which is not necessarily fair. Um, how do you how do you separate, you know, how do you make each character so distinctive from anything else that you played? Is there, I mean, you know, how do you not, you know, you, you look at the script and go like, okay, this person again, like I'm playing the villainous again, you know, the you know, the, the girl next door is actually the killer. And, and, but this is like the 10th time you played that role. How do you, what do you do to keep those roles fresh for you creatively? I mean, they, they're someone being like, being a villain doesn't, in my opinion, mean that it's, it's, it gets an archetype, but it doesn't have to be the same thing every time. I mean, all of the characters that I've played, that I've created, they all have, their own backstories, whether that's written into the script or it's a backstory that I help create with the writer mm -hmm. um, that isn't necessarily in the film, but it's just up here in my head for me to reference when I try to think about the decisions that a character would make. Um, I, I, there's a lot to be said about like costuming and, and hair and makeup, though. I never really feel like the character until I get into the wardrobe, and that kind of inspires a lot of the decisions that I make is the way that I look once I'm once I'm dressed for the part. So, like, if uh, so, if someone actually like, uh, see, Steven's mentioning uh, Jackie with a mohawk. Um, I I think I think she's got the the perfect hair right now. You I know, think I'd be cool with a mohawk. It would be, but it would be. But I think I don't think I've done that. Well, do you want to do a little little mohawk? Because yeah, Trevor, can, mohawk. Trevor, Trevor's right here. I'm sure he's making notes. Uh, sure Trevor knows he's... that I would do a mohawk. I'll, uh, I'll cut my hair for whatever. Hair hair grows back. You know, I'm not worried about my hair. Okay, so basically, what she's saying is she'll do a mohawk. Um, if he if she, if, she, if she does a piercing and and then she gets to do a mohawk. See negotiation. Thank you, thank you for your yeah. assistance, Patrick. Oh, oh, no problem. Uh, that's twenty percent. Um, so. <laughs> of what? Twenty percent of what? <laughs> of, of the crafty. Okay. I get I get a T-shirt. Okay, um, yeah, I'll ship yeah. it to you. <laughs> uh, see, look how fun you are. See, I, I'm just having a really hard time seeing you as a villain, which is really awesome. It's a credit to you. I mean, you know, you got that. You got the, you got the, you got the girl next door look. You know, look, sort of like a. Like Elisha Cutbirth is like that. Do you have the same type of look? No huh. one ever but no one ever suspect it. Um, so what do you like about uh what do you like about murdering somebody on screen? I mean, do you before you do the scene, do you uh do you talk to your scene partner about it? Like this is what I'm gonna do, uh or do you mo or is there, or do your, your characters mostly use guns where you don't have to worry about it? Like no, guns, I, are, guns, I... guns are impersonal, but let's say you have to, you know slash somebody or stab somebody do you talk to your screen partner about it and and what you're gonna do and oh yeah especially when effects are involved you've got to be pretty particular with what you do so the you know the camera team the actors and the effects team are all on the same page because resetting a botched special effect is 
-hmm. it takes a really long time. So the goal is always to get it in the first take. So everyone should be on the same page. Also, like, I, I mean, with certain, with certain things, I think it's cool for actors to surprise each other uh, and just see the other actor's natural response. But it, whenever something's getting physical, you know, whether it be killing someone or just fight choreography, I think, you know, I want everyone to be on the same page because I want myself and everyone else to feel like we're safe with what we're doing. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of conversation that happens before that. Um, people are saying we're getting the we're getting the road warrior vibes from mm. you. Oh, Fiorosa. Yeah, I can see that. Or the or the uh, uh, or, or the or from uh, road uh, for the road warrior, uh, the warrior woman. Yep, definitely. Uh, Mayanne says she can do a Rosemary Baby type of movie. I hear yeah, that a lot. I get yeah, that one a lot. People call you Mia Farrow a lot. Yeah, because I, I'm like, why is like my camera's reversed or something? Yeah, I got like no hair, so I get Mia Farrow all the time. Yeah, I love Rosemary's I, Baby though, so that's like one of my favorite horror films. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that, that's it. That's it. Yeah, but I don't see that. I, I know. I think the look they call that is elfin, but I don't really see that. I'm not really, not really vibing that. I don't have um, pointy ears. Uh, um, yeah, you know, because because you're small and and you know, like you know, short. But the short haircut, they say you know, you look like a, it's elfin. It's like pixie. I hear or pixie. pixie. Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, 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 I don't know. Is that is that a term that you that you do you embrace that, or you sit there and go like, "No, I'm a little bit more than that." I feel neutral about it. I don't like the term. Yeah, I I'm feel neutral. neutral. It doesn't bother yeah. me, but yeah, not, 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 I've seen it before with some actresses, and I, I can understand that, but I don't, I don't see that with you. Mm. No, no, no. I, uh, uh, Steven says now, now they can see. Uh, yes, uh, doing Psycho, Janet Lee. That's yeah. Um, what's the, uh, what's the, what's, the, what's been your favorite, uh, you know, on both sides, what's been your favorite kill scene that you've done with a partner and what's your best death scene? Hmm. Hit me with all the hard questions. Do, yeah. I'm just going to ask you, do you have to really prepare yourself mentally to die? Is that, is that something yeah. you do for yourself in your yeah. trailer? Yeah. yeah, you got to prepare yourself mentally to do everything. Um, I don't know. Maybe one of my favorite kills I've ever done was in uh, in memory of I like bash a guy's face in with a telephone. I have the telephone actually on display in my bedroom. Do you want to see it? Yeah, is this is a blood still all, all over it? No, I clean. It, there's like a little bit of blood on it, but I bashed someone. Can you see it? I bashed yeah. someone's head yeah. in with this, and that was cool. Nice. One of my nice. favorites. Um, um, and you kept a little blood on it. Yeah, there's a little blood on it. That's 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 actually very cool. Yeah. Not, nobody, nobody would think. No one would ever think about that. Most people would just clean the prop all the way out. But I like the idea you actually kept blood on it. Keep a little that's spatter cool. on there. Yeah, that's cool. It's sort of evil, though, too. It's a know? little evil, yeah. yeah. A little evil. A little bit. I'm sure Trevor's making notes right now. Must must give her a phone in the next movie. Um, <laughs> no, he's got to keep it fresh. Uh, okay. Uh, cell phone next movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so what's the what's the uh, as far as the as far as the dying goes? Uh, what's been your what's been your uh, best death scene, and how did you prepare for it? Mm. Is there a best death scene or the most original? What's more What's more important to you, to have a good death scene or have a good original death scene? Mm, I think just a good death scene is more important than original, because I just feel like everything's already been done pretty much, and I feel like as the more ridiculous you go with it, the more it just turns it turns into comedy, which there's a time and place for. Absolutely. Uh, like, what is it? Um, student bodies that uh, 
slasher satire film from the 80s i think they they kill someone with like an eggplant right have you seen that uh, uh, yes I, i'm actually thinking right now i'm actually thinking you work with debbie roshan mm -hmm. now debbie, debbie roshan is you know she has died on screen so many times she's the queen she, she really is a screen queen no yeah, doubt she's amazing yeah she's awesome um I mean, you know, again, it's like it's one of those things where it's like you, you know, you, you when you do a death scene, I think I think it's one of the most important things to you know carry out. If you do it right, it stays with the audience. You know, when you die, especially if you die in a really unique way, right, it'll stay with, it'll stay with the audience. Right. Um, if you just go out there and someone's oh look there there she is shooter, nobody cares. No, right. You know, nobody's gonna, gonna remember that. But getting hit in the face with a phone. People will remember that always. It's um, pretty cool. It is. Now, what's the first time you? Well, how did your parents react the first time they saw you on screen getting killed? Uh, they're like, "That's our daughter. This makes sense." <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually like watched my movies with them. Really? No. Well, why? Why is that? I don't know. I just I don't like. Honestly, I all of the movies I've done. I've watched them all like one time because I don't, I don't like watching myself. Like I love being on set and I love the process of making the movie. And then of course you watch it to see how you did, but I just cringe seeing myself on screen. Cause I just see all of the, the problems, you know, I, I just see all of the things that I wish I did differently. So I, I'm not um, super eager to like watch it with people. Mm. I don't know. It's like it, the art's out there. It exists. Like we were there for it, but I don't really care to indulge in it more than once. I, I guess I can understand that. Though I, I, I would encourage you to see it more than once because I'm, I'm sure you would be very happy to know how, how good you really are. May, you know, maybe if you stretch it out like 10 years apart, like, oh, I haven't seen that in a decade. I'll pop it in and see <laughs> maybe from the perspective of seeing how far you, you've come you know but well, yeah, I, I just you... generally don't it just makes me uncomfortable especially when we do um like premieres and like live screenings and there's a whole audience i just like my heart just beats out of my chest like every time i say a line that i think i should have said differently or right i don't love watching my stuff that's too bad because I, I think i think i think the audience you know the audience loves watching you i hope so of course. You know, I, well, I, I, I mean, well, think about it. I mean, you know, actors are, you know, they say well, you're, you're only as good as your next part. You know, a lot of, you know, you have to be good in order to work. You know, you just can't get work just because you happen to be there. Oh, she, she's an actress. Uh, we'll cast her. They cast right. you for roles because you're really good at it. That's, you know, that's really what it comes down to. Um, um, as so, long uh, as other people enjoy the work, that's that's fantastic because I'll keep getting the work and I love doing the work. I love being on set. It's my favorite place to be, but yeah, I just, it's great uh, if other people enjoy it, but I don't know if I'll ever get to that point where I like watching myself. Uh, so what do you like to do when you're, when you, you know, um, what do you, how do you prepare for your roles at home? I mean, do you still, do you have this audition still or do people know your work by now and they just call you to offer you roles? It's a little bit of both. Um, I definitely still audition for stuff, but th then there are uh, roles pretty often that come through where someone's seen one of my, my movies and they reach out to me to be in their next thing. So it's, a, you know, I, I stay pretty busy with, with auditions still. It's a little, it's a combination, but it's awesome to get to the point where you're auditioning less frequently and just booking the work without it. Cause I don't. Are there actors that like auditioning? I don't think there are. I think actors that say they like auditioning are lying. I've I've run across both. I've run across some who. There's some that hate the that they hate the taping. They say they hate the yeah. That's yeah, what the, the taping. They don't mind, it's, yeah. It's hard because you don't have a director in the room with you to tell you if you're taking anything in the right direction. Well, that's you know? nice for you though, hasn't it? Hmm? Say that, that again? Changed, that changed for you, didn't it? What do you mean? You married a director. Oh yeah, but he's but 
if there's another, it, the other director might not have the same vision as him. Mm. You know, so Eric can like give me his advice that he would give as a director. But a lot of times when you audition for something, you're not given the full script. They just send you sides. So like two, three, four, five pages of the script. So without context of what else is happening in the story and in the arc of the character, it's really hard to tell what you should be giving the camera. So it's it's tough. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are. Yeah, uh, some people are. Uh, uh, some people are. Well, you got a virtual hug because I understand. You know, I actually understand that too, Stephen. You know, I, it is it is hard for when I hear that from actors who uh, say that. Uh, I, I, you know, though, but I'm actually with you. I'm actually with you on that about as far as uh, looking at yourself. Um, I, I, I rewatch, I re-listen to these shows, but I rarely ever rewatch them. Mm. And the one thing I noticed a lot with me is I over talk. I talk way too much. Can you like? Do you hate the sound of your voice? Because I hate the sound of my voice. Me too. I hate it. I I I I, I hear it and I sound like an old man. It's like my voice is not, and I stutter like oh, I stutter like nobody's business. Oh, I don't think you do. Uh, I'm speaking very quietly today. I'm mm. trying to I'm trying to, you know, to to you know, and I'm really consciously trying to make sure I don't over talk. I was listening to uh, I was listening to my interview earlier with another guest, and oh my god, I kept on saying "shut the hell up." <laughs> I was just rattling. I was just like, uh, "You're not the guest. You're you're there just to observe and to ask questions." Hey, it's your show, man. You do yeah, whatever but you, you want. Yeah, but they're not here to see me. They're here to see you. Sure, they are. It's uh, your show. Uh, let's see. Uh, see now, I get asked if I look like. And anybody told me if I look like Colonel Sanders. Oh my God! That's all right. Let's see, that's it. That's it. I'm not um, seeing it. No, thank you. Thank you for I'm that. Not I seeing the colonel. Thank you. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 No colonel. No um, colonel. Uh, so, what's been the scariest uh, role that you've done? The one role that you had the hardest time letting go. Um, the one that stayed with you, you know, locked in your head. Every actor has one of those characters that. You know, it's just like they it's always there with them. What's what's been the one character for you that what has been the hardest one to let go? Hmm. I've I've never really had a problem letting characters go. I don't know. I'm I'm not a method actor. No. I'm not. Um I don't know, like I a lot of the content of the films I do is very disturbing, but I, it doesn't bother me. I've just spent so much time like consuming disturbing media since I was pretty young that like, it just doesn't really affect me that much. So I've honestly never really had a hard time letting a character go. I know that's a boring answer, but it's just the truth. Okay. Now, now, uh, now see, see that open up the, now it open up the, I'll open up the box. Uh, Colonel Cheetah. I uh, see more like a gray cheetah. Um, I, I, had, I had to chip in with a, a gray nuclear man for my uh, for my good friend Cal. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Uh, there's our friend, our fellow podcast host, Stephen uh, Hor Hor uh, Hor Freak eighty five. Glad you're here, sir. Um, yeah, you know it's funny. I'm just the last thing I was thinking about death scenes. Is that you know I was telling like how do you, how do your how do your peers or how do your parents react to it? Do you know I get more reaction? They, I think I get more reaction to them uh, about a death scene than it is a romantic scene. Like what you know what would bother your you know what bothers your parents more or your peers most if you had to do a new scene or death scene? And for the most part, I mean like like 80, 80 20, Most people have a real hard time watching watching like like it would be it's hard watching you die. You know, the hmm. one. there's actually I, I actually I think my a, parents have a much more difficult time with the romance stuff than the death I, stuff. I, I actually interviewed an actress who was in this movie and I got to know her and we're talking. I hadn't I hadn't watched her movie yet. I, I had bought it and then her and I did our interview. And she's so lovely and she's so she's so cool. 
that when it came down to like, I was supposed to maybe watch the movie, I couldn't bring myself to do it because she dies in the movie. Mm. And I, I just don't want to see her die. Uh, uh, I would want to see her die. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't know who it is, but. Uh, uh, now, now David, someone like someone like Debbie Roshan, who I absolutely adore. Uh-huh. I I expect her to die because she dies so well. Yeah, she's she's great at dying. She, yeah, she, she's yeah. Um, well, uh, what's what are some of the challenges? You, what what are some roles that that you would like to try to challenge you and and uh, stretch you out creatively? Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing a little bit more comedy leaning stuff. I don't know if I'd want to do like a straightforward comedy. For me, I, I want to always do things that have like a horror or macabre element to them. Uh, but I would, I wouldn't mind taking on some more like real goofy roles. Goofy's yeah. fun. My dream role is a mother that has Munchausen syndrome. So, oh. if anyone who's watching wants to write that movie and cast you're, me, you ever see a movie called The Nine The Nine Lives of Louis Drex? No, Louis. I haven't. Let me write it down. What's it called? The, the Nine Lives of Louis Drax. No, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, okay. Aaron, Aaron Paul's in it. Okay. He's um, great. Yeah, he's he's great. I got that movie because he was in it. Okay, so it's like I a know, newish, newer film. Newish within the last, I think, the last four four years. Four oh, okay. Or five years. Yeah. Um. It's funny because I never watched Breaking Bad, so I never knew who he was. Yeah, he's um, real good. I knew the name, so then I, I I saw the name, like I know who he is. So let me go, let me see, you know, let me take a look. Mm-hmm. I was so blown away by that. I'm like, you know, and I was like, wow, he's really good. So I've gotten, you know, every any chance I get a chance to uh, to get an Aaron Paul movie, I, I'll I'll do that. Yeah, I like him a lot too. Are you he's scrappy? You know. He's real scrappy. He's not like a pretty leading man. He's no, kind of rough no. around the edges. I like yeah. that. Um, speaking of that, I mean, uh, who would you like to share a scene with? What are what are three actors you would like to share a scene with if you got a, if you got a chance if you're doing a dream casting? What three uh, three actors or three actresses or combination uh, would you like to share a scene with? Mm. You know, what genre <laughs> and what genre would you like to share it with? Like, you know, if he did Robin Williams, it, it would probably be comedy or drama because he didn't do that much. He didn't really do horror too much. Right. Well, he did One Hour Photo. Yeah, and he did Insomnia, too. He's awesome in One Hour Photo. That's, like, one of my favorite performances. Um, I mean, I see there's this new independent film. I don't think it's out yet. It's called The Forest Hills. And I wish I was in that movie because Shelley Duvall is in it. And it's her first film in 20 years. And I would really love to do something with Shelley Duvall because I love Shelley. I think she's one of the most interesting performers of all time. She floats around the screen like a ghost. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's got like a vibe that I've never seen anyone else have. I really like um, Sissy Spacek. She's definitely one of my favorite performers. Um, Jeffrey Combs. From Reanimator, yeah. I love me some Jeffrey Combs. Yeah. So these are all definitely people that I would, you know. There's like one I was just thinking about that not that long ago, within the last couple of weeks, and for some reason, I it's slipping my mind who I was just saying like, oh, I'd love to work with them. Who is it? I'll think about it tonight it, at like three a.m. Really funny, really funny too, uh, is that ever since they announced Shelley Duvall is coming back mm-hmm. and after that movie. The one thing I've noticed, and, and to me, it's actually rightfully so. I, I really like the idea that peaceful people are now are actually pushing back against Kubrick for, for basically ruining her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds and like pushing, she was pretty traumatized. Yeah. I mean, they're pushing back on it now. You know, when you hear people talk about the best directors, you always used to hear him his name being mentioned. Right. You, you don't really hear that anymore. You don't know, I think he's still a pretty beloved filmmaker there. He's done a few films that I do love, but I wouldn't, I don't identify as like a huge Kubrick fan. Like I can recognize that his films are brilliant and that he was brilliant, 
it's just not my particular taste in movies. I love A Clockwork Orange. Um, but I'm kind of hit or miss with some of his stuff. Which, I mean, Shelley Duvall's obviously amazing in The Shining. Uh, yeah, see, that's the movie I just, just, I just don't like. Never have. What one? The Shining. Oh, just, really? No, no. I'm supposed to rewatch it. I'm supposed to re. I'm so, that's one of my things I have to do. I have to rewatch it, see if I change my mind on it. But I already know. I'm already. I'm already locked into it. Yeah, I, if you don't like it, you know that's fine. Yeah. Don't make yourself watch something that you don't like. What What, what are some of the movies now? Are you, I mean, is there any movies today that you that you would uh. You know, like you would like to have been part of, and there would. And what movies, if uh, what movies would you have stayed away from? I mean, are there roles that 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 Jackie won't do at all? Like, oh hell no, you know. Mm. You know, I feel, I feel in your grave, part four. Oh hell no. No, I mean, I would do something like that. Uh, I I don't know. There's nothing that's like super off limits for me. So basically, you would do the Human Centipede. I mean, I don't like the human centipede, but you like it or no? No, <laughs> like the con. It's not the content that that bothers me. Like the 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 roles in itself, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just don't really like the movies. Uh, yeah, I mean that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean there are some movies that you'll watch that you you know, or some parts that will come up there and you'll pass on. I mean, sure. What, what, was, what was the last movie that you passed on? Oh my god. The last script he read and he said, no, nah, I'm not really feeling it. It's not me. Hmm. We want names. Oh, I'm not gonna give you names. We want names. No, no. <laughs> I can't do that. Sometimes it's just sometimes I pass on scripts because the timing's just not right, you know, if I'm busy with mm. other stuff. Or sometimes I just don't like the script. Um yeah, that is I'm, not making, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> That's uh, none of y'all's business. Uh, Trevor just um, said, "What about Hallmark Christmas movies?" Let's see what was uh what about Hallmark Chris? Oh, Trevor, it depends you on walked, the, the paycheck. Yeah, you walked you walked right into our wheelhouse. Uh, we love Hallmark movies. I don't think I've ever actually watched a Hallmark movie. I know everyone mm-hmm. makes fun of them, but it's like I've never actually seen one, I don't think. Watch one called The Christmas Train. The Christmas Tree? The Christmas Train. Train? Yes, The Christmas Train. All right, okay. yeah. I had this. This is uh, going on my... The Christmas Train, Hallmark. Good. I, I, th- I sent you a friend request, so you can accept my request. I then, did. I, I accepted it like two hours then, ago. Then, then, oh, wow. See, We're look friends at that. now. We're friends now. We're pals. Uh, I think we'll become close pals once you watch the Christmas train. Oh, it's really, I, it's a, it's a beautiful movie. Is it that really sarcasm? Is. No, no. Oh, absolutely. it's actually a beautiful. No, movie. no. The chat, the chat will tell you right now. No, I can. If you go to my channel, my YouTube channel, uh-huh. you you see I, I review Hallmark movies. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you're a big fan. Okay. Oh yeah, no, well, I, I watch. That'll, yeah. up, that'll be the top of my Hallmark list. I'm interviewing Crystal Lowe on Saturday, and she did. Uh, she's done Science Field and uh, Science Field Deliver for Hallmark. Oh, okay. And, do you and, watch this on the Hallmark Channel, or do you like buy the? No, I, I I buy the movies. Wow, you're like a real fan. Dang, you don't strike me as that. Oh, oh, that's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. Uh, let's see. Signed, sealed, delivered. Nine, miss, ni- 17? Is it 19 or 17 mystery movies? Uh, 17. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Uh, they actually did, a, they actually do uh, uh, mysteries. Uh, they did one with uh, Jesse Metcalf called the Martha Vineyard Mysteries. Let me tell you, I watched a lot of mysteries. They pretty much always know what's going to happen at the end. Yeah. I didn't know until the last, until the la- till they revealed the killer. I was so shocked. I was like, no way. It would have been like if it had been you. If it had been you. I would have never would have guessed it. it You would have been the killer. And they had had that kind of ending. It was so so cool. 
Maybe I just need to give Hallmark a chance. Maybe I've just I've been misguided all these years. They're fun. I mean, they're they're formulaic for the most part. I would always stick stick with the mysteries. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, they, they have some good. You know, I, I like because you know, like I said, you can't live on horror alone. You just can't. you can though. I, that's what I've been doing. I yeah. Well, when you go to the, when you go on a date, what kind of movies do you go? To? I mean, what what what's been the three best movies you've seen this year? I think I've only well. So normally we don't see that much new stuff in theaters. We normally go like once a month to there's a monthly film program in St. Louis called Late Night Grindhouse, and they exclusively program. Um, like horror and exploitation cult movies. So most of the time it's like older stuff. But other than that, I saw I saw Skin of in theaters, and that was like January, maybe. And um, I recently saw Bo is Afraid, like two weeks ago. I really liked it a lot. Uh, Trevor's sitting there going like... Uh... He's saying uh, Hallmark movies cause major brain damage. Uh, well, that's that's coming from Echo. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, and hi, Kellyanne Ross. How are you? Oh, Kellyanne Ross. Uh-huh. Hi, Kellyanne. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I missed a lot of questions here. <laughs> Holy cow! Uh, well, Trevor mentioned about it. he's so glad he brought up the he brought up the uh, the Hallmark movies. That's because he's uh, a maniac. I'm, I'm just I just let him know that he'll be coming up on on the show soon enough. So you know he he's not going to escape. He'll he'll be he'll uh, he'll be uh, asked those same questions. Yeah, I'll be I'll be standing behind my keyboard and asking him all the. <laughs> I'll just be uh, annoying him the whole time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what you say? You don't really go out too much, to, to, you know, like to watch you know modern horror. I mean, is there any, is there any movies you know other than Skinner Morenic? Which actually was put out uh, uh, by uh, IFC Midnight, by the by the way, everybody. Uh, okay. Just let you guys know, I just let you guys know that. Uh, I watched a movie. Uh, I, I'm a huge uh, IFC fan, and we watched a movie called Swallow last Sunday. I was trying, so I wanted to watch that. I was going to rent it on Amazon, but it was like twenty dollars, and I just like couldn't justify it at that moment in time. Is no, it good? It- it's so good because it sounds really interesting, and I heard about the premise, oh, and I was mad that I didn't write it first because it just seems like something that I would be into. It's like, isn't it about Pika? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. It it is. It I I personally thought it was a horror film. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know my other my other my other uh uh because we do an ISC show, uh the last Sunday of every month we cover one movie that the studio puts out. So I got to pick Swallow. Okay. Because I'm, you know, because I'm hoping to, I, I would love to inter, I would love to interview Carlos Marabello Davis or Haley Bennett. Um, but we watched that movie, and I'm telling you, I it, it made my skin crawl. It yeah, did, I really want to check it out. It, it was so disturbing, and uh, but it was so beautifully well, it was so beautifully acted too. That's what I've read about it. Yeah, I'm very intrigued by it. Um, that movie just that that movie will stay with you. That one, I promise you, that one will stay with you. Um, All right, I'm moving that to, to the top of my. You've, you've yes, that's the number the one. Uh, you could do it like a double header. You could do double feature. You could do Swallow and the Christmas Train. <laughs> <laughs> you don't that know if like you're coming. Most you would know if you're coming. You don't know if you're coming or going. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so what's next for you? I mean, um, I mean, what's the rest going on for the rest of the 2023? Uh, are you going to get a honeymoon in before you go back to work? Um, we we probably won't get a honeymoon in until next year. It's looking like it's shaping up to the, the rest of both of our years are shaping up to be pretty busy. Um, I've got to finish this film that I was telling you about called Wake Not the Dead in L.A. next month. Okay. Um. And then this fall, I have a movie called Reaper Road that I'm shooting. And then a a couple other things that I can't really talk about yet that I'm very excited about. But my lips are sealed. So there's quite a bit going on. It's going to be a busy year. I like the name of that movie you mentioned, Reaper Road. That sounds pretty badass. 
yeah it's it's pretty cool it's like a it's like a paranormal film uh do you believe in the paranormal jackie i do okay so when you do a movie like that you bring a you have a sense of a you have a sense that it's uh, uh based in realism you know this is actually it might be the first paranormal film i've done i don't normally do paranormal stuff is it i'm trying to think yeah i mean i don't i believe in like s spirits and ghosts yeah but no I, it's it's just acting like i i don't get too it's like I'm, i was saying earlier like I, i'm i don't get super method about things and i have an easy time like detaching myself from the work that i'm doing Do, when you act have you, have you ever acted anybody have you ever ever shared a, a scene partner with someone who is acted uh who's method yes <laughs> How, how, how what's the what's the reaction? I mean, is it is it something like you react, you go like I respect the process, or is it one of those where you just like is it just is it so, somewhat humorous sometimes? Yeah, it can be. You and you try to find I, I, I respect the process. I I'm glad I'm not method though, yeah. because I feel like I have so much fun on set, like in between actually filming because you know there's there's so much lighting setup time and effects set up and so you're on set for a long time where like as an actor you're not actually doing something and so when i'm not doing anything i like to you know have fun with everyone there and i feel like if if you're method if you're like truly method yeah you can't really like enjoy yourself in the same way and maybe i'm wrong about that because i'm not method and no, i don't know what i'm pretty, talking about but pretty much about, right, about you're pretty much about right yeah um, it just it seems like um I don't know. I just enjoy the the process of like the family element of making a film and the people there. So I haven't worked with that many people that are method. I don't think it's I don't think it's super common. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Kid and Crypt is here. Our good friend Meowtis Meowtris is here. Hi Meowtris, how are you? Uh, she'll be on the show next week. Oh, this is cool. Hi, how are you? And Hi, Cal Meowtris. Says uh, Cal says she looks like she wants to say, pay me, and I'll watch a Hallmark movie. So <laughs> that's not true. She'll watch it. She'll watch it because she because I'm recommending it. I mean, it sounds like, like the best movie ever. Just like a Swallow. She'll watch Swallow. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I promise you, you, you watch that movie, you'll be pinging me up saying, dude, we got to talk about that movie. I'll let you know, because I oh, I'm, I, I'm I was already well. interested in it, and now I'm very intrigued, so I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. If you if you, if you want to talk about that movie, you ping me, uh, I'll be happy to talk about you. Let's do uh, it. I'll talk about you with that. Yeah, that's a, yeah, Haley Bennett right now, to me, is she's doing unbelievable work right now. She looks like so, Jennifer Lawrence. Doesn't um, she? No, she's prettier. You're like, no, she doesn't, you're wrong. <laughs> No, she, they're both she's, pretty uh yeah i i, I she's just really, she's just really luminous you know mm. really, really she just there's like something her. about her uh she's been she's been in a few blockbusters she's she was in the magnificent seven uh she was an equalizer uh she was in cierno um uh, music and lyrics the hunting of molly hartley that was her first role that's a supernatural thriller okay Based on a true story, actually, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. I'm so cool you guys are all here. Uh, hey, John, how are you? Wow. Uh, John uh, John is a, a vendor I was telling you about before that goes around all over the country. Oh, that's yeah. John, that's June Stage Crypt. He also does a, a pair of podcasts, which I'm sure he'll be reaching out and touching, talking to you soon. Um, and Hi, John. I yeah, I would recommend going on his show. He's got some fantastic guests on his show as well. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, John, glad you're here. Uh, do you guys have any questions for our guest, uh, Jackie Kelly? Uh, let's let's take a few questions if we can before we got to let her go. Congratulations again on your wedding. Thank uh, you. Where, where did he propose at? Uh, at a state park in Missouri called Johnson Shut-Ins. Did you, did you know it was coming? Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, because I've been, like, bugging him for a year. 
He's like, when are you going to propose to me, fool? Yeah, then, what's up with that? Yeah, what's up with that? But the wedding was cool. We had our reception at, um, there's this really like crappy, scary wax museum in downtown St. Louis. Okay. And we had our reception at the wax museum. It was oh, cool. Really? You ever seen the movie called Waxwork? I have seen Waxwork, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, Let's see. Um, oh, uh, she, we, we, uh, Cal, we talked about that right when you got when you first come on. Uh, you can't be a screen queen until you do until you've been killed uh, eight times or been a final girl. Uh, exactly final, eight you, times. Eight times. If you've been killed uh, eight times as a fi as a fi uh, uh, in a movie, you get to be a screen queen. If you've been a final girl, how many? Ten times. Uh, final girl ten times that qualifies you as a uh, screen queen. But I, that seems like a lot, though. I don't know. Like, there are some actual scream queens that haven't even done that that many times. Uh, who, 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 I mean, well, Debbie Rashad, of course. It's like uh, five times. Okay, five times. Di five. Di have you died on, have you died on screen five times? I've, uh, no? maybe not even five. I've, I've definitely killed way more than five people, though. <laughs> You love that part, don't you? You love being the villain. You, <laughs> you, you take a lot of, yeah. I take a lot you know, of pride. Girl, I guess your scene partner must be. Murderousness. Yes, your scene partner must be looking over going like, please tell me she's not method. Please tell me she's not method. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm punching your ticket, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not quite so many. Uh, maybe not. Maybe also maybe maybe uh maybe seven times being the killer, five times being uh being killed. That's fair. Okay, that's okay. Seven. So, uh, so combination of twelve. That's a that's twelve rolls. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, yeah, because you know I'm I'm with you. I think people once they see the a girl come out and um you know they immediately label the screen queen on it and you know it's like maybe not necessarily you know. But I mean, I, I know, I know. I, most of the girl, most of the actresses that I talk to have embraced it. They they don't mind being called a screen queen. You know, they yeah. just they see it as a, a honor. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I understand if that you know, I don't want. I wouldn't want to get typecast with it though. That's the thing. That's that's the th that's the thing. Uh, uh, um, like I said, I have Crystal Lowe coming here on Saturday. And she just directed. She just uh, wrote and directed her second short film called oh, After Girl. After yes, it's a really. I knew what it was. I knew what it was about right away. As soon as I watched it, I knew exactly what was being said. Hmm. And, and I'm sitting there going, like, "This is this is really about you, isn't it?" And she's like, "Oh my God, you got that!" And I'm like, "Yes, how could I not?" You know, and uh, totally understood it. Totally understand it. I hope that you get some chance to do some comedy. I hope you get your chance to do some drama, uh, maybe even some action and adventure. Of course, some horror as well. Um, you know, you know, anything that we're anything that keeps you busy and, and on the screen. Being uh, busy and on the screen is good. Yes, uh, Jackie, I want to thank you coming for coming out and hanging out with us. I had a lovely time talking to you. Uh, you're very very fun, and uh, and I want to thank the chat for coming out here and supporting us, uh, including Trevor. Uh, and Stephen and Marianne or Mayanne and Cal Al, uh, John, uh, 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 Stephen, uh, you guys have really rocked it hard tonight. I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, I will have you come back, Jackie, for sure. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a lot of fun. We're gonna get Trevor on here, too. He we're gonna get Trevor on here. We're gonna get Trevor We're on next, here. buddy. Mm -hmm. He is next. That's right. Uh, all right, tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, we will be back at eight o'clock. We will be talking to Dave Wyatt. Uh, he is also known as Gene Don't Presents, and he'll be here talking tomorrow night at eight o'clock. Friday, we'll see us talking to uh, Casey. Internet Kaiju will be here with us at uh, Friday at eight p.m. and then Saturday again, uh, Crystal Lowell at six p.m. Special start time for for uh, that for that show. Um, and thank you for coming out too, Kellyanne. Um, uh, Hi, Kellyanne is, is, again. That a, that's a that's a fellow. That's a, is that a fellow actress that you work with? Kellyanne is a wonderful production designer, art director that I've worked with. 
Oh, awesome. She's fabulous. Awesome. Fabulous human and fabulous at her job. Um, uh, after Crystal's show on Saturday, the last thing I have to pronounce, uh, announce, uh, me and the Cheetah, we're going to be hijacking the House of Horrors on Saturday. Uh, we're renaming it House of Cheetahs. And uh, we'll be on at 8 o'clock here on Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure what we're talking about yet, but you can rest assured it'll be awesome. Um, thank you again for coming out. Uh, Jackie, you stay right where you're at for a minute. And I'm going to say good night to the chat, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Peace. Peace. Come on. Oh, yeah, my phone. Here it is. My phone acting goofy. Ah. Uh.